There are many organizations in Kansas City, like Restart KC, working to solve a major issue of food insecurity in the homeless community. While this isn't something that all individuals in our community know and experience, this is an issue that is in need of a solution. With over 2,400 current homeless people in Kansas City and 30% of them on the streets, and this number increasing by the year, this is a problem that always has and will always affect Casey if we do not make a change. We can just cut out whatever's not used. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, in terms of the most effective way to help people get the resources they need, um, my role is to remove as many barriers as I can. So that means partnering with the families um, to kind of do a, an assessment. As social workers, I look at systems. And so, you know, not only how is the student functioning in the family, but how is the, funct the family functioning in the community. Um, so sometimes, like, transportation can be a really big barrier to people accessing resources. So it's kind of building that, like, web of knowledge of our community um, and all the resources available and just kind of knowing what barriers people may face and being creative and how I can address those. I actually have a food pantry in my office. That's super cool. Um, so, you know, if students ever need food f either at school, you know, sometimes they just need a snack or they miss breakfast um, or didn't, weren't able to get breakfast from home, um, you know, it's been great that, that meals are free for all students now. Um, so that has reduced another barrier um, that students used to have. Um, but, you know, they, they can go hand in hand, but if students' basic needs are not being met, so shelter, food, um, hygiene, things like that, um, oftentimes they, they come into my office and that has a big impact. It's very, very difficult um, for students to learn and master new material when their basic needs are not being met. Yeah, so would you say, the basic needs is most of what you do with for the resources that you provide like providing just those basic things or would you say that it goes beyond that sometimes um in terms of resources um i typically always start with the basic needs making sure those are being met because like i said our brains are kind of like triangles where if those yeah. that foundation isn't there and um, things can get really difficult um, but I also, you know, some students have those basic needs met and um, we're looking for more than mental health resources mm -hmm. or support. Um, so it just kind of depends on what the student needs. Eradicating homelessness and hunger would vastly reduce health care costs and reduce the number of food assistance programs, which would save the city and taxpayers money. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine National Institutes of Health, safe and permanent housing can give residents the stability they need to organize their lives and maintain their health. In result, health care costs are reduced by 59%, emergency department costs are decreased by 61%, and the number of general inpatient hospitalizations is decreased by 77%. This means that solving homelessness and hunger would drastically decrease city spending and that money would go to things like education which would further reduce the potential for homelessness as well. Saving money from solving homelessness and using the money to prevent homelessness in the future would also introduce more people into the workforce and in a time where businesses are struggling to find people to work, it drastically helps local businesses thrive. My name is Ronald Davis. I've been on the street for about a year and a half now. Well, I come from the suburbs. Life, you know, which is, 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 is rough. Another positive effect of getting people off the streets is it causes a decrease in crime rates. People gain a new and increased sense of security as theft levels drop due to a lack of reasons to steal necessities. From a study done by the National Library of Medicine in 2018, Recent crime was consistently higher in groups who had been homelessness relative to groups who had been housed and crime rates fell after obtaining housing. This study provides a direct correlation as to why it's beneficial to get homeless off the streets. A community of less crime benefits the city as a whole and can dramatically affect 
housing costs and generate a sense of security, bringing in more tax dollars, enriching the people within the community. We went out to their homes, residences, and, um, and interviewed them and got their information. Now that's, that's done on the phone. Now, and, and previously when uh, a, a client would come to the pantry for food, they would come in, uh, be greeted, fill out a menu out, outside in a waiting area, and then when it was their turn, they came in and could interact with the ladies who were filling their order. We provide other things like diapers, laundry detergent, dish soap, and yeah. uh, a few other basics, necessities like that. So ladies so are food. generally bagging up the food, putting it in the cart, and then somebody takes it to the cart and puts it in, and they wait in their car. Yeah. You've seen it. We have, it's like a so tiny grocery store. Yeah, we have yeah. there the aisles and the shelves, and it's organized in a way that and the freezers and the refrigerators that the and, and our menu is organized in a way that, that if one section of the menu corresponds to one aisle in our so that uh, different people can simultaneously be filling that order and there you you volunteered down there too you, you, you can interact with the people but but knowing and seeing the impact that's hard there's, yeah. but there's uh, certainly some people are just more outspoken in their appreciation. We're just glad they're there. They don't have to be effusive in thanking us, but it is kind of nice when they are, when they uh, uh, are obviously thankful and, uh, and really appreciative for what's done. But, uh, but no, you can come in and not say a word and get your food order and, and leave, and we're happy to do that. It's, so the interaction is is uh, more limited, uh, but uh, it is good to see them firsthand when, they, when we can. Last but not least, employing homeless people helps prevent labor shortages and helps homeless sustainably take care of themselves. 414,000 homeless people are unemployed. Employment of all these people could work to help prevent labor shortages and provide homeless with a stable income. While there are millions of jobs for hire, the employment of nearly half a million homeless people would make a significant difference. As well as stable income, these people can sustainably take care of themselves and that benefits them greatly as well and it also benefits their community. In conclusion, solving the problem of homelessness will open the possibilities to solve other issues in the area. These issues vary from improved crime rates to the issue of labor problems in Kansas City. The more people we can get off the streets, the less crime we will see and the less crime that will need to be dealt with in the future. With less crime, we will also experience a wave of less money needing to be paid in taxes. Overall, solving homelessness will create a spiraling effect, improving the well-being of our community in Kansas City. He said, because I know you're a human being. He said, would you accept my party? I said, party accepted. He went in his pocket and gave me 30 bucks and said, go get you a room and get you something to eat. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, no matter what people think about me, I know I'm a human first. And just because I'm down on my luck, don't give nobody no excuse to call me no bomb. Because I'm not.